Ah, uh, yes. The ocean. I don't know, dude. I just find I must feel like we should play some music for this. Uh... Oh, it's about time. So wh why do you find the ocean peaceful, Russell Hicks? I, uh, I grew up in San Diego near the beach. And for some reason, whenever I go stand near the ocean, I just sit. Dude, I feel like th someone's going to take this clip and play it. Like an This sounds like a, a YouTube clip from Alan Watts. <laughs> like, I feel like I... Who is the self? Do you know yourself? And through your own mind, you know what I mean? But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Whenever I go to the beach now, I just get this overwhelming sort of like, uh, I get like maudlin almost. I just get like, and I, but I like it. You know when you feel kind of sappy, like, uh, but you like it, you indulge in it? That's how I get. You know when I just stare out at the sea, pull down my trousers and wank. Hello, this is the Street View Interview Show. I'm Dave Green. I'm here today with my guest, Russell Hicks, stand-up comedian and improviser extraordinaire. How are you doing, Russell? I'm doing great, Dave. Brilliant, mate. Feeling really excited to be a part of this program. I bet you are. This I am. program. I am. This internet program. The first place we're going to visit is we're going to take a look at your hometown. All right, man. You ready? You ready to go yeah. home? Yeah. Enter at your own risk. Let's do it. Okay, so where where are we? Where are all we right. in the world? Uh, woo. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ramona, California. I have a lot of good memories here, obviously, because I was a kid. And as you can see, it's a very middle class sort of a... It's like a ranch for young white children to run free. This is how rural this area was. There was a part of the... Uh, I don't know what you call it, city, but like that we actually called town. Just to give you an idea how country this was, we lived here, and 10 whole minutes away was town. Golly, town. And, like, you would talk about it as if it was a big trip to take. Like, oh, I'm going into town. Gotta go into town. And town was actually, sociologically, it was miles apart. I mean, it was more like city kids, which our version of city, which to any other urbanized area they were country bumpkins you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's, it's kind of like the hills have eyes right but imagine a place even further removed from civilization than that that's where i lived and now we're gonna take a look at the next place yeah which is where you're living now you ready to go yeah let's go let's do it So England. where where is this, Russell? This is in Ealing. Uh, this is in England, and this is in London, England. This is uh this is pretty much where I live, and um, I like the fact that I was able to get over here. I always wanted to travel. To a lot of people, this might be very run of the mill, mundane, like they grew up in London or whatever. To me, this is like being on another planet. This is in my own small way. This is like making it, as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, I've got a litany of issues tied up with my hometown. You know what I mean? I had a lot of trouble back there. I was I was ostracized just for the very fact that I could read. And like I wanted to get as far away as, as I possibly could. And so like this is this is an achievement in that respect. Okay, so we're going to go to your next place now, which is your most favorite place in the world. Oh, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. This is your favorite place in the world. So where, where is this, Russell? This is Prague. Prague, Look nice. at that. And why, why is this your, your favorite place in the world? This is the thing about Prague. Okay, if you look at history, it is an anomaly amongst the Eastern European countries in the sense that it was kind of the... It was always sort of rebellious against like the USSR and Soviet oppression and all that. And it just has this feeling that the the entire city is about the arts. There's something about Prague and it's like it's cliche because everybody says it. But there's something about Prague when you're there that whatever my wavelength is, that artistic sort of like I, I just want to be in the moment, not not stressed. 
the whole city is on that wavelength. It's beautiful. I mean, look at it. It's great. And now let's go to your least favorite place in the world. You ready, Russell Hicks? Yeah. Let's go. Hey, we're back home. Uh, back in your hometown. Okay, this is what I was trying to tell you earlier. This is town. This is like... Uh, look, okay. I, feel, I feel really guilty, man. Like, I feel like people, especially my parents, would be very upset to hear this. But look at that. Okay, actually, that place is delicious. I mean, if there, there is one thing about sort of rustic... Uh, living, and that is, you can occasionally come across just some good old fashioned American home country cooking. You know what I mean? Like you will get a mountain of of food from this place. I actually did think that place was quite delicious, but uh, other than that, if you just want to pan around, um, I mean, look at that man right there. Just zero in on that fella. Do what it, does that look like? <laughs> hey, sir, you want to have a metaphysical conversation about? art and what what do you think of obama sir everything right it's just like i don't know that guy's probably all right but you know there was just uh i don't know man there was just something went wrong when i hit 13 you know there was just a point in my teenage years where like suddenly everyone just decided they wanted to fight me you know i don't know what i was doing that's what i mean if you like it's just for no reason they just decided it's like the whole town just kind of decided there was something wrong with me yeah so i just i wanted to get out of there i haven't really dealt with anything like that since you know so now we're going to go to a place with a happy memory all right the genie spa Boy, oh boy, uh, let me tell you, you get a rub down from Coco. Actually, to be honest, I, I always used to look at that place. You see, Oriental Massage. Hang on, where, where are we? Where are we're, we? We're, we're, uh, now we're in downtown San Diego. So this is like, okay. I had made it down the hill. I mean, this is huge with my stick and bindle moving into the big city. And wh why is this a happy memory? What, what happened here? This is like around the time I started doing stand-up. Okay. They had gigs all over the place in areas like this. And I just remember the, the open mic circuit was so free at the time. It was amazing. I loved doing stand-up down in this area. I would just have some of the best sets ever to like eight people in my mind at the time. And I remember I just loved it. I loved like uh, I would walk out of there. And it, you know, if you have a great set, it doesn't really matter where you are. You walk out, you feel like a million dollars. So I would like that's how i i sort of like associate this area with some of those great times just being like you know what if i always if i stay broke forever but i have nights like that once in a while i'll be fine so now we're going to go to the next place which is a place with a sad memory here we go hollywood there it is why why is this sad russell what happened here god i think this is really sad actually i was i was there for like 2 years and I, I started doing stand-up a lot with this guy who uh, you just meet people on the open mics. I mean, Hollywood, this is the thing with Hollywood, man. If you go there and you're not invited to be there, you know, you're really taking a gamble. And if you're a comedian, usually what happens is you st you spend most of your time on the open mic circuit, which is fantastically bizarre and depressing. But I, I started doing stand-up with this guy for like 30 days, and we just were gigging. We just found ourselves gigging all the time. We'd drive around 5 o'clock to 2 in the morning, and... Uh, I just remember like one night he wasn't around and I, and this is, this is around the time when everything changed for me in LA and I, I, I was looking for him, looking for him and I was like, hey, can you tell him I signed him up for all these open mics and then someone told me the next day that he died. He died. He like, he took a bunch of pills and I knew that he was kind of having trouble and he, and he, he was dead and then like that, that, from that point on, I never really processed that because I was like, I only knew him for like a month but when you... Are, are driving around with somebody for seven hours a day for like 30 days. We talked and talked. I was like, man, I really did. I really did have a relationship with that guy. Everybody thinks they're special. And then Hollywood really reinforces that that's not true. And you have two options. You can either laugh at that, at how funny it was that you thought you were so special. Or some people take it really seriously. And I don't, I don't know what his deal was, but he... Uh, he, yeah, it, it ate him up. So this is the last place. It's been a pleasure sharing this journey with you. 
And now we're going to visit the last location, which is where do you want to retire? Where, where do you want to grow old, Russell? Let's find out. There it is. Switzerland. Uh, I've never been to Switzerland. I don't know where this got into my head, but this is essentially, I don't know what this says about me. But this is not, I'm not trying to be funny. This is a genuine, and this, this actually scares me that this is a genuine thing. I want to be the guy with a Wikipedia page that at the very end says, like, uh, in later life, just disappeared and nobody knows what happened to him. And I essentially, this is what I want to do. At 50, I want to have made enough money and I want to have gotten my name to the point that I can live in Switzerland and just grow a gigantic beard, live in the woods, and write the worst novels. And I just want the only photos of me to exist like like this, where people just see me coming out of a shot like, like that with like a big old beard. That's it. And I want to Greta Garbo it just for the rest of it. I just think that'd be nice. Live, just just be done and just be up in the mountain. And I think Switzerland, I, I realized I got that because when Charlie Chaplin got extradited from the United States, he went to Switzerland for the last 25 years of his life. So if you think about that, 20, what are those 25? You All you know about Chaplin is this massive, but 25 years, he was just kicking back in Switzerland. And to me, I'm sure he was bummed out, but that sounds fucking awesome. That's it. So now we're going to we're going to zoom out and have a look at the world. Thanks for coming on the show, Russell. You will. thank you, Dave. Cheers, mate. That's beautiful. I've been Dave Green. This has been the Street View Interview Show. He's been Russell Hicks. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>